There are a lot of really exciting players in the modern day blues guitar scene and Kirk Fletcher is certainly one of my favourites amongst it. Every note the man plays just oozes with feel and whilst he is of course a fantastic lead player, for me personally it's his rhythm chops that really fascinate me as both a fan and as a student of blues guitar. Now, I've been guilty of neglecting the rhythm side of my blues playing for years now. I always feel like I've just been getting by with fairly basic comping skills and ideas. But listening to guys like Josh Smith and Kirk Fletcher has really opened my eyes to a new world of possibilities uh, when it comes to making blues comping much more interesting to listen to and to play. So a few months ago, I posted this blues shuffle comping etude thing to my Instagram, which is what you heard me play at the start of the video. And that was very much inspired by the playing style of Kirk Fletcher in terms of the chord voicings that I used, the single note lines that I threw in between the chords, and just the rhythmic feel in general. I thought it would be cool to do a lesson on this and so I had it transcribed and notated in full by Levi Clay and today I'm going to break down the main elements that go into this blues shuffle comping rhythm style so that you actually leave the video with an understanding of what goes into it. But before we break it down, let's refresh our memories and listen to this blues comping etude in full once again. And I'm gonna put the tab on screen so that you can come back to it and study it once we've broken down the main elements that go into this playing style. And a tip for those of you who want to hear it slowly, just use the speed control on the YouTube player. Okay, let's hear it one more time. Now hopefully you will have learned a thing or two by the time you get to the end of my video, but if you want to go further with this playing style, I am by no means a master of it, uh, just consider this an introduction really. Um, so I would encourage you to go and check out Kirk Fletcher's online courses because I know that he does have one to do with rhythm playing specifically. But anyway, let's get started by breaking down this etude into various key elements, starting with element number one, the shuffle feel. That's the rhythmic pulse we want to feel throughout the etude. You do not want to play it straight like this. You've got to throw some swing into it. Now, notice above the first bar and the notation there's a bit of the page that says two eighth notes equals a quarter note and an eighth note played as a triplet. That is indicating the shuffle feel. Basically, that means that wherever you see eighth notes in this transcription, and there's a lot of them, it's mostly eighth notes really, you want to play them as if they were eighth note triplets, but with only the first and third note in the triplet played. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, allow me to just demonstrate by clapping some triplets for you, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So now, instead of clapping the second note in each triplet, I'm just gonna clap the first and the third notes. And this is what you're gonna want to replicate on the guitar, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, let's replicate that on the guitar. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So that's the shuffle feel. Now let's move on to element number two, 
card voicings. Now I'm just going to play through all of the voicings for each of the three chords in this blues progression. There are only three chords, really just you've got a one chord, a four chord and a five chord, all treated as dominant seventh chords. So in the key of A, the one chord is of course A, the four chord is D, and the five chord is E. Okay, but as you probably noticed from listening to the intro and just me playing the etude again there, you probably noticed that there's not just one chord voicing per each of those chords, right? There's a bit more going on there. So we're gonna break down all of the chord voicings used in this etude right now, starting with the one chord A7. This is the first voicing we have for the A chord, for the one chord. It's an A7 voicing and I am fretting the root note on the low E string with my thumb. And there's a good reason for that. It's because I need my index finger at fret five on the D string, I need it there so that I can easily slide into the single note line that's gonna appear in between the, the one chord. But we'll get to that later. Um, just know that that's why I am fretting this voicing in this way with my thumb on the low E string. The next voicing for the one chord is an A13 chord played up around the 10th fret. that has the root note on the B string. Then we have another A13 voicing played back down around the fifth fret. So that's quite similar to the first voicing we looked at for the one chord, this A7. It's just like that, but we're actually barring the seventh fret on the B and high E strings with our pinky. Moving on to the four chord, D, the first voicing we have is a D9. Now, this voicing does not have a root note in it, but at some points in the etude, I like to add it in on the high E string, and that would be at fret 10. So that would mean barring that fret with your pinky here. And by the way, there's a point in this etude where I take the three notes in this chord on the D, G and B strings and I slide them up by two frets. And that's giving me more of a, a D6 voicing with the, the sixth on fret 12 on the B string. Then we have another D9 voicing played down around the fifth fret with the root note on the A string. You might be familiar with this voicing. And one final D9 voicing that you'll see a lot of blues players use really quite often. I like this chord a lot. That has the root note on the high E string. Now for the last chord type, the five chord. We have these two E9 voicings, which are exactly the same as the first two D9 voicings I showed you. It's just that they're two frets higher to make them E9 voicings. Okay, so you've got one without the root note and one with it in there, barring the 12th fret on the high E string and the B string. And for the five chord, we also have this E7 voicing down here with the root on the A string. That's all of the chord voicings. And by the way, if you're interested in filling up your chord vocabulary and learning the theory behind chords and chord voicings so that you can understand how and when to use them in your playing, you might wanna check out my Bulletproof Guitar Player courses linked in the description box below. You can buy them individually or subscribe to the site on a monthly or annual basis to access them all at the one time. Now let's move on to element number three, double stops. 
on the one chord. So as you just saw, when I'm playing the one chord, this A7, I'm not just comping on that, I'm not doing this. I'm adding in a double stop at fret seven on the D, G and B strings. Well, I guess that would technically make it a triple stop, but you get what I mean. And I am also hammering on the major third of that A7 voicing which is this note at fret six on the G string. So you'll really want to work on playing that alone before you try and piece the entire etude together. I would encourage you to just work on playing this, uh, this hammer on and this double stop on the one chord to begin with. Element four, passing chords. So there's a couple of points in this etude where I insert some chromatic passing chords. And that's really just a fancy way of saying, I take a chord voicing and I slide it up or down by one fret, up or down by one semitone before eventually landing on one of the three chords in the progression, the one chord, the four chord or the five chord. For example, in the first turnaround of the progression, which in a blues progression means the bar where you move from the five chord down to the four chord and then return to the one. In that first turnaround, I take this E9 voicing and instead of just going down two frets to play the D9 voicing, which is the four chord, I take a quick pit stop here. See that? I could have just gone like this, but instead I'm adding in that same voicing just in that one area that's in between those two chords. Then the second time around the progression, just before I move from the one chord to the four chords to the D9, I actually take the D9 voicing and before I play it, I play it one semitone higher. And then as you just saw, I actually take it down one semitone lower before returning to actually land on that D9. Now, what's the super complex theoretical explanation behind these chord choices? If there is one, I don't know of it. It's just, it's just blues, okay? Don't overthink it. Sometimes in blues, it's just cool to take a chord voicing and shift it up or down a fret, a semitone, before actually landing on the chord that you're going for. The fifth and final element is what really makes this interesting and fun to play for me personally, and it's single note lines. I'm talking about the little melodies, little phrases that I'm injecting in between the chord voicings. The etude starts with this. And you're really gonna to wanna to practice that because that little phrase appears throughout the entire thing. So to play it, you're gonna to wanna to start by strumming a downstroke with muted strings, and then come up strong with an upstroke to play the first fretted note in the phrase. So practice playing that first. And then when you feel confident enough to do so, add in the chords and the double stops on the one chord. Mm -hmm. 
There's a couple of minor variations on this phrase that pop up. For example, in the bar where I do that D9 to D6 chord voicing switch thing that I talked about earlier. Remember I talked about taking these three notes and moving them up and back down by two frets. As you can hear there, I do a slight rhythmic variation on that opening phrase. And I actually start that one by strumming with a downstroke and then coming back up. And the other variation on that phrase comes just after the first turnaround. So that about does it as far as the main elements go. Now, a couple of other things I feel I should mention before I wrap this video up are to do with how I chose to develop this etude. So it goes through a 12 bar progression twice and the second time I play through the progression, I didn't wanna just repeat exactly what I played the first time. And so I threw in a few curveballs to keep things interesting. The first of which was leaving out that little phrase that starts the etude. The first time I play through the one chord, I think I play that phrase maybe three times. And the second time round, I leave more space in between the chord voicings and those double stops. And I think I only play that little single note phrase once, maybe just one time before I move to the four chord. Yeah, just one time before the four chord. So I chose to develop things a bit by leaving out um, notes that I'd played the first time around. So I'm choosing to leave more space in there to develop it. The second thing I did to develop the etude was something I've already touched on. It was adding in those nine chords, a semitone above and below the four chord. <laughs> And another thing that I didn't actually yet touch on was the stabs that I played right after that on this other D9 voicing that we looked at. That right there. You can imagine a rhythm section backing you up on those hits, right? That would sound awesome. But anyway, Thank you for making it to this point in the video if you did. I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson. And if you wanna continue learning from me, I have a ton of free content already available on my YouTube channel, but I also have courses available on my website. So you might wanna check them out. They are linked in the description box below. And if you're watching this in November, 2020, you might find some special offers lurking around in that description box. So go and take a look and see if you can get yourself a good deal. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.